Hey there guys, in this video I'm going to be giving the very basic breakdown on how to live stream. This video is going to be for sheer beginners on how to stream for the first time. But if you're familiar with streaming, there may be some tips and tricks that you may find handy in this video. So thank you for joining me and let's get you started on how to go live for your very first time and how to make things look a little bit nicer to make you stand out early on. There are a variety of different streaming platforms to stream off of, and in this example, I'm going to be showing you how to go live on Twitch. But this video will be applicable to all other platforms if you desire to stream somewhere else. Now, first off, we're going to need our tool for streaming, and I'd personally recommend using one of two, and that is OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS. In this example, I'm going to be using OBS Studio as it is my preferred streaming platform to use. If you do decide to use Streamlabs OBS, do not worry, you'll be able to still follow along with everything that I'm doing. So let's select the platform that we want to download OBS Studio on. Let's install it and then open it. Okay, so now that it's open, we're going to want to set up our very first scene. This little box on the left hand side, this is going to be our scenes and the box to the right of it is going to be everything that we place in the scene. And these are called our sources. In case you have an empty box here, we're going to right click on this. We're going to select add and then we're going to be able to add the scene of our choice. Let's go ahead and give it a name. So we have our main scene here and next let's keep it simple and add our gameplay. Now, for the majority of people who stream, you'll probably be using one computer. Here, we're going to want to right click the empty scene, select add, and then be able to select a game capture, which solely captures the game that we're playing, or we can choose a desktop capture, which is going to show everything that appears on our screen of choice. And you can select that by going up one here for the display capture. I'm gonna select the display capture for this example. And here is our monitor that we are capturing. Now, obviously this is gonna look a little bit funny, so I am going to make this invisible for now, just so it doesn't appear as confusing. Now, if you do use the desktop capture feature, just be aware that anything you show on your screen is going to be visible. So don't be going and putting your valuable banking information on screen. So behind us, we have our gameplay here. Once again, just going to mute this. Let's pretend this black scene behind here is our gameplay now. Next, we're going to want to add our camera. But if you're not using one, don't worry too much about this part. But for others, let's go ahead and right click our scene. We're going to select add and then go to a video capture device. Now from here, we can label this as our camera. And then from there, we will be able to select our camera. And from there, you'll want to crop your camera to size. So let's go ahead and turn our gameplay back on. And then once again, here is what our scene looks like. And while this is very bare bones, this is an example of a very basic setup showing the content that you may want to display. Later in this video, I'm going to have some suggestions on how to make things look nicer, but let's keep things simple for now. Now, at this point, we're going to want to tweak some of our settings. One of the most important settings that we're going to want to change is our bitrate. And a great way to find out what our bitrate is going to want to be set to is by running an internet speed test. Typically, you're going to need an upload speed of at least 10 Mbps. Anything above that is great. Anything below that, you're probably going to have to make some slight adjustments. Going up to the top left, select File, Settings, and then down to the Output tab down below, you can see exactly where we can enter in our bitrate. Your bitrate you're gonna wanna have between 6,000 and 8,000 kbps. And typically 1,000 kbps represents one mbps of your upload speed. So having a total of 10 mbps upload speed will allow you to comfortably stream between that six and 8,000 bit rate that I'm recommending to you. I personally stream using a bit rate of 8,000. And as you can see, my internet speed is clearly good enough to be able to handle that. But let's say your internet speed was lower than 10 up and let's say it's only eight up even, I would recommend sending it then to about a bit rate of 6,000 and even 5,000. And lastly, we're going to need our stream key. Our stream key is essentially the serial number for our channel. Putting this into our streaming software is what's going to allow us to feed the footage directly to our channel. You will need this. Simply copy your stream key, and then back in our stream settings, we'll select the stream tab. We'll select the stream key option. Make sure you select what platform you'd like to stream off of. 
And then from here, you can enter your stream key. The server up here has auto. It says it's recommended. I personally like to choose the server and I recommend choosing something that is close to where you're located. You can also leave it on auto. It'll go off of the best server that is close to you as well in case that matters. From there, we hit apply and now we are good to go live on our channel. And that's it. Now we have a basic setup with our gameplay, our camera, and the content that we can bring to our channel. But maybe you want to add some more scenes, some more artwork, and make things feel much better overall. And here are some tips and tricks on some tools and things that you can use immediately to raise the overall production quality of your content. First off, let's talk about overlays. Overlays are just simple additions to your scenes to create a better overall flow and try to make things look even nicer and more professional. You're able to make overlays yourself, hire an artist, or check out one of my favorite sites, nerderdie.com. This website here offers overlay bundles that are very high quality for a very affordable price. This website is a fantastic source of great quality overlays that are affordable and will help your scenes stand out even more. Streamlabs OBS also has a ton of great overlays and other features that you can utilize if you use Streamlabs OBS. OBS Studio will not be able to work with the Streamlabs overlays. But next up, let's talk about alerts. I personally love using Streamlabs for my alerts and they are very easy to set up. If you navigate to the alert box on the Streamlabs website, you'll see that here you're able to add a variety of alerts and definitely set these up to the way that you'd like. Once you've found something that you're fond of, simply copy the link here and in OBS we want to add a browser source. From there, we're going to paste the browser link in here, adjust the window size if need be, and then we can easily now have some alerts to add to our stream to know when people show their support. And more fun things to be on the lookout for are widgets. Widgets come in a variety of styles and features based on what you're looking for. Being able to add end credits, fun interactive features, different goals that you may want to display, and more. Streamlabs widgets have a variety of options to choose from and to play with, so take advantage of these in finding something that suits your style and scenes. Another incredible tool to utilize is Motion. Motion is an incredible tool that allows the users to dive into a fully customizable 3D space that you can set up and decorate to however you see fit. And what's amazing about it is that you can set up cameras all around the room to move around and link this all into OBS easily. It is amazing for creating an even more immersive environment and experience for your audience. It's fantastic for VTubers and you can create a fun and interactive experience for your chat to also engage with. And Motion is very user-friendly. It's arguably one of the coolest creative tools that I've come across and it's very user-friendly. I highly suggest checking this out. And my last tip and trick for yourself would be to get a Stream Deck. Stream Deck is a fantastic way to set up hotkeys that allow you to easily change your scenes and have easier control of your stream. Rather than having to manually click on scenes and functions in OBS, you can set up everything that you need with the simple push of a button, allowing you to seamlessly coordinate through your content. Through my own personal experience, the Stream Deck is an absolute must-have tool. So if you're ever going to start investing money into your setup, I highly recommend checking out one of these. But for now, I think I'm going to leave it here. If you've ever wanted to learn the basics on how to set up a stream for yourself, this is how to do it. And don't forget to check out some of the tools that I've suggested to help you create higher quality content and stand out even more early on. But I don't want to overwhelm you too much, so I'm going to leave it here. So as far as that goes, thank you very much for watching. Good luck with your content, and I'll see you next time.